This episode was powerful. Luke S. is fighting for his livelihood as a man. This episode was sexual. <laughs> Let me do that one more time. <laughs> this episode was incredibly freaking confusing. How does it make you feel? How does it make me feel? Do, do you want to know how it makes me feel? This is your Bachelorette Episode 5 Recap. I'm Lauren Zima. Grab your glasses. It's time for Roses and Rosé. Hi, everybody. Oh, are we all right? Are we okay? I'm not okay. What an episode. I've brought two bottles of wine today. Yeah, two bottles of wine. My rose gold wine opener. I'm Luke P. Everyone loves me. I'm Luke P. I want to give you clarity. That's all I want for you. The cork broke. That feels on brand for this episode. Nothing is working. Oh my God. All right, here we go. Let's just keep trying. Let's be like Hannah and let's just keep trying. Do, do you want to know how it makes me feel? No matter how difficult it is, no matter how nonsensical it is, Let's just keep digging in, trying to make it work, right? Why not? No matter how many red flags are coming our way, let's follow our heart. The rosé is a more reliable effort to pursue. Nikki, sorry. I also have my self-care wine glass, everybody. Okay, why do I need all these things? Because this episode was insane. What did you guys think? Are you over the Luke P stuff at this point? Let me know in the comments below. Let's get into it. Save that for later. It's just good to know it's there. It's comforting. I'm really confused, so I just want to hear you guys talk to each other about this. What's going on? We left last week with a to be continued. Tonight we are back at the rose ceremony with the Lukes, and tonight things are powerful. So, Luke P tells Lucas again that he's not here for the right reasons. I just don't see a fit for Hannah. Because he's not the right fit for Hannah, that's not what not being here for the right reasons means. So you're speaking for her now. And this is going to be a theme, isn't it? Luke P saying confusing things. I'm just going based off what she's expressed to us. Do not drink every time Luke P says something confusing. Hey, I can understand how you can feel like you're being deceived. <laughs> Okay, I can understand your frustration right now, and I've admitted to Hannah, and I've admitted to you both, that I don't even know you that well. So Luke P is making no sense, uh, because then he says that he had no business in saying whether Luke S was there for the right reasons, but that's exactly what he just did. I don't have any business saying whether you're here for the right reasons or not. You know, we're all gonna, we're starting to feel crazy, and it's gonna keep on going, isn't it? Is that why you need me in the head while I was down on the ground? I was trying to step over you, man. Luke S brings up the whole kneeing in the head thing again. And I just want to clarify quickly because I saw in the comments and like on Twitter and everything, you guys were saying, no, 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 we saw the incident. We did see the tackle. But I think there was a lot of talk about like how it ended, the kneeing in the head, that kind of thing. And that was the part I felt was missing and that we needed to see. I also would have liked a lot more angles just to really understand. And most importantly, what is concerning me about Luke P more than anything is the overt lying. I don't remember how it happened, to be on completely honest with you. He said he didn't remember it, he did. Please go up there and tell her the truth. Yeah, I plan on it. He told Luke he was gonna tell Hannah that he was wrong. He didn't. These are lies. And lies hurt more than a need of the head, don't they? I guess it depends on the lie and the power of which the knee was to the head, but you know what I'm saying. And things are powerful. We are getting powerful music. We are getting powerful shots of stained glass windows. We are getting powerful words. Did you or did you not? <laughs> I said Tell to me, you. Will you go talk to Hannah? Luke P's voice is calm, but his words are powerful. He isn't screaming, but he is doing damage. And that is powerful. Luke P is one of those people where you end up screaming at him because what he's saying isn't making sense. And he's like, why are you screaming? And it's like, because you're driving me crazy. You're making me feel crazy. Am I going crazy? Please drink responsibly. Okay. Uh, Hannah, may I talk to you for a moment? 
So Luke S. pulls Hannah aside, and that's powerful. And then Mike says that Luke S. is, quote, fighting for his livelihood. Fighting for his livelihood as a man. And that is powerful. And Luke S. tells Hannah to keep her eyes open. Keep your eyes open, all right? That's powerful, powerful. And then he leaves. Woo! That was a powerful move. Luke S. self-exits from the show. I did not see that coming. Did you guys think Luke S. was just gonna leave? I was shocked. And then one rose is taken away still, and math is hard. I don't know what that means, but it felt powerful. Luke P. And we say goodbye to John Paul Jones. And that is powerful and Mateo, and so I guess we're never gonna get the real story about his sperm donations that fathered 114 children, and that would have been powerful. But we'll probably see you guys in paradise. Bye! Cheers to John Paul Jones and Mateo! Mm -hmm. Hey guys, it's me. It had been a while since we vlogged, and I just wanted to vlog because I realized I should have said, uh, don't drink every time I say powerful. Powerful, powerful, powerful. We are getting powerful music. Powerful words are powerful. Powerful. His livelihood as a man. And that is powerful. And that's powerful, powerful. And then he leaves. That was a powerful move. Math is hard, I don't know what that means, but it felt powerful. And that is powerful. Powerful. Oh, crap. We're going to Scotland. We are in Scotland, it's not Rhode Island, is Scotland an island? Whatever, I'm happy to be there. We're gonna get a sweeping moors, and we're gonna get castles, and we're gonna get cliffs, and we're gonna get uh, grass. What is that? Do I, am I, I don't, is this Sean Connery I'm doing? The Rock. Welcome to The Rock. There's, mm -hmm. Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. I don't know what I'm doing, but I love Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Dad? Junior? Don't call me that, please. But Harrison Ford and Sean Connery together. Two of my childhood crushes. Anyway. Hannah says, let's reset. I think we all should just reset in this new country. But I don't think we can. Do you guys think we can? We are too deep in this Luke P stuff. We can't just eradicate it. So maybe we can't reset, but we can move forward. Uh, Mike? Mike gets a one-on-one. -on -one. And Luke P's face. But Mike is smiling. And then Luke P is defending himself again by telling the other guys. You weren't there, trust. you don't know what you mm. speak of. This is his constant defense. No one was there. Guess what, babe? In not all, but some cases, the cameras were. So this is gonna come out. <sighs> oh, I love it. You look so cute. Okay, Mike and Hannah's one-on-one. -on -one. Guys, it's cute, they're having fun. Hannah's cracking me up. I loved how she had a couple glasses of whiskey and she was like, I got a little swagger on my step. I got a little bit more swaggy in my step now, hey. Uh, they ate haggis, gross, great, I don't know. I'm up for trying new foods. Is this Loch Ness Monster? Uh, I just love this date. I thought that they were wonderful. What did you think of Mike and Hannah's one-on-one? -on -one? Do you think Mike will be in the final four? <sighs> and I still, as much as I liked their date, I'm still wishing we had the sailing date. So I'm dressed like a freaking Popeye impersonator today. What am I wearing? Oh, uh, but then the show is the gift that keeps on giving. I miss Tyler C and they gave me Tyler C in a tight T reading a date card. Okay. You don't have to be shirtless to look great. Love a t-shirt moment. Tyler T. Okay. This is the first time in this entire journey I've been this nervous. So also loved the moment where Mike was just really honest with Hannah about being kind of nervous and revealed that he had not been in love for five years. I haven't been in love for almost half a decade. That seems like a long time to me. I hope that I really find clarity in how I feel about her. Luke literally went from the first group date where he was saying he was falling in love. Now he's saying he's just excited to see where his relationship is with Hannah. The guys are back at the castle and talking about 
how Luke P's feelings are all over the place. Like one minute he's saying he's falling in love with Hannah, the next minute he's saying maybe he's gonna leave. And I'm starting to have one of these moments that I've been having occasionally where I feel a little bit bad for Luke P. And I think, you know, maybe he's just this guy who like needs to go up a little bit. Maybe he's just confused. Maybe he's emotionally stunted for some reason. And then I kind of remember, but then again, he's doing things like saying that the other guys aren't the right fit for Hannah, which means that he's saying that he thinks he knows what's best for Hannah. And that's really controlling. And also then I remember that he lied like several times that it was caught on camera. And then Devin puts it all into perspective perfectly. But honestly, at this point, I just feel like he's a big ass douche canoe. Okay, the group date, and we are at another castle. I love it. Drink for every castle. Mm -hmm. They're giving us good castles. Castles and, am I Scottish or Irish? Scottish. Am I doing Scottish? Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you for confirming. So, uh, Peter's looking, no, now I'm Irish. <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult, I'm grouping the whole United Kingdom together, sorry. Ah! Uh, Peter is just looking so cute and smiley, and when is he not? Uh, uh, and then I have to say I was a little disappointed because we're going to do the Highland Games. Welcome to the Highlands. Ah! Uh, we've done this before, maybe on multiple seasons of The Bachelorette. I definitely know they did it on Emily Maynard's season. He broke it? He broke the wood. I'm not gonna lie, it was impressive. Sean looked friggin' hot. Uh, in Croatia for whatever reason. And like we've seen ax throwing. Ah! Oh. We've seen wood chopping just so many times. Ah! Ah! Bow down to your queen, ah! bow. And then they're tackling each other again. And I mean, honestly, it's more sports. I'm over it. I'm ready for something like the labor pains date again, where it's not so much about the physicality, but about a funny scenario. Like maybe they all could have gone whiskey tasting together and see what happens there. would be a good time. And then we cut back to the other castle. <laughs> and we realize that with Mike having a one-on-one -on -one and everyone else being on the group date, that means Mike and Luke are alone in the castle together. That's powerful. And what comes out of it, I will say, is bizarre. I thought maybe we'd get another argument, but instead, we get more defining. The monster is also apt to inspire disbelief or faith that borders on mania. Like, remember Luke P was holding up that phone and defining psychopath? Now Mike is defining the Loch Ness Monster? Something unexplained exists underneath the surface. And I'm like, where is he going with this? Luke P was on a phone, Mike's reading a book, and we realize it's all building up to a pun of the Luke Ness monster. Hannah's gonna see it. She's gonna realize the real Luke P, he's the Luke Ness monster. Tepid applause. Golf clap. We're in Scotland, I think golf was invented there. I don't know for sure. I feel like I've heard someone I hang out with a lot mention that. Whatever. Back to the group date at Castle 12C. Mm -hmm. And this Scottish guy even says this is the first. First Bachelorette Highland Games. The first ever Bachelorette Highland Games. And it's not. <laughs> Good afternoon, gentlemen, and welcome to the Highland Games. <laughs> you know, I don't even understand some of these challenges. Like with the milk, was the object to go fast when carrying the milk or to not spill the milk? Unclear to me, and I'm not really sure that anyone wanted any of it. But Pilot Pete does love to soar like a literal plane. <laughs> I love it. It's as if he's like, I'm just flying my planes. I gotta protect. Back home wrestling. And then more sports. They're wrestling in kilts. And why didn't they wear underwear? Not wearing any underwear, so definitely concerned about showing my butt. I didn't I don't know if anyone told them you can't wear underwear. It seems silly and there were children present at that event and things got revealed. I saw all the bagpipes. My eyes. The old haggis. Drink every time Hannah wears a cute winter hat. I like her hats. Mm -hmm. We haven't talked about this much, but what do you guys think of Hannah's fashion and style this season? Jed. Yeah. Jed wins, I don't know why or based on what, but okay. And then the after party is at another castle. But it's wine, not whiskey for me. It would be ignorant of me 
to ignore the fact that today went so great and Luke P wasn't on this group date. And luckily, Hannah has realized and acknowledged that Luke P like shouldn't be the focus of everything anymore. It was a great day with these guys without Luke P. Bring us grapes. 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 <laughs> so then she gets her time with the guys and Jed and Hannah forget the chemistry with Luke P. Let's talk about the chemistry with Hannah and J.E.D. You know what I'm saying? They are making out. And what I love is that this night is going to be Hannah making out with the guys in the worst dress possible for the scenario. She's like, I can't, this dress is like, it's like a trash bag. It's like spandexy. Like speaking of her fashion, it's like, I, think I can't. I want it, but I can't. Right. I want to make out with you, but it, it's, it's, it's not great. It wasn't a good dress for it. But they pushed through, and Jed and Hannah are making out. Jed's Hannah is on her butt. Jed's Hannah is on her butt in that trash bag dress. And then Kevin comes in. <laughs> Poor old Kevin. I kind of forgot he was there. How's his shoulder? Who knows? I was just sitting there and watching this for like 15, 20 seconds. I'm like, oh my I mean, me and Hannah have not kissed yet. And Kevin sadly reveals that he and Hannah haven't even kissed yet. Wow, how did we miss that? And he just like watches them kiss. For like 15, 20 seconds. It's just like, I just feel like Kevin is Kevin from Home Alone. Like he's just like, and he can't stop watching. Of course I wish that was me. Then, oh my God, I'm gonna need some more wine. Drink for every time. Hannah's gonna make out with somebody tonight. Get it, girl? Yes, I needed this to take me away from that Luke P stuff. So Peter and Hannah are making out. Theirs is also awkward with that dress and the pool table. And when is Peter not smiling? Is he smiling while he's making out? Somebody tell me. Mm -hmm. And then Tyler and Hannah are making out. What is up? We found every place to make out in the castle. Hannah, the true Highland game. <laughs> hmm. Mike and Luke P are still alone in the other castle together. It is like a horror movie. And then Luke P gets a one-on-one -on -one date card and it was so powerful the way he interpreted the card, wasn't it? The date card said, let's figure things out one, one way, way or one another. Way. I think myself, and let me know what you guys thought, interpreted that as, let's figure things out, we might break up or still be together. Luke took it as, let's figure things out one way or another, we're gonna be together no matter what. One way or another, Luke, we're gonna get through this. Interesting, isn't it? Which way did you read it? Let me know in the comments below. Finishing up the group date, Connor tells Hannah, I'm like totally gonna fight for you. I'm gonna fight for you. <laughs> And his accent is so in stark contrast to the Scottish accents. And Hannah says all the guys were amazing. So amazing. It's also powerful and Jed gets the rose. Mm -hmm. Now it's time for Luke. Peace. One on one. Here we go. Okay, so I'm honestly not gonna spend a ton of time on this because it was too much time watching it in the episode, wasn't it? I felt like I was in someone's like difficult, we're not getting anywhere relationship fight from like their college years and when it's all unhealthy and no one knows what they're doing and it's like, I, it was painful for me. Either today is the first one-on-one -on -one with my future husband or it's the first and last one-on-one -on -one date with Luke. Hannah starts things off uh, seeming to say what we interpreted the date card to mean, that this could be their first or last date together, a make or break. And Hannah confronts Luke with all the things she should. The guys don't like you, like I just don't understand. And Luke is just not giving answers. And this goes back to my point that I brought up a couple weeks ago. I don't think that they really have good conversations together. I think that their connection is very strong, rare physical chemistry, but what have they really talked about? And this date confirms nothing. It's really not adding up. 
Hannah can't even get Luke to have a conversation with her. Any, anywhere I've ever been in my whole life, everyone loves me. She is having to explain how to communicate. I know, but don't say things like, people love me. That makes you so mad. She is having to explain what feelings are. I don't know what you want me to say. Do not drink every time Hannah says, please tell me how you feel. Like, how does it make you feel? How does it make me feel? Do you want to know how it makes me feel? There's no feelings behind the things that he's saying. About what it means when I say, how do you feel? One more vlog. We should have said, drink every time Luke says clarity. I just want to give you clarity. I want to give you clarity. It's just so many red flags, and I don't think that any relationship, regardless of the setting, whether you meet on a reality show, or a dating app, or a garage sale, or a sailing boat, should be this difficult this early on, right? It, it's too much. Can somebody talk to him about what it means when I say, how do you feel? It gets to the point where Hannah goes and talks to the producers, and she is saying, can someone go talk to Luke and explain feelings to him? She's essentially asking the producers, can someone go give Luke therapy? You have to talk, you to, need him to, talk to him about that. And it's like, no, we can't do that here today. We're on a fucking cliff in Scotland, Hannah. There's no therapists around. It's just you and Luke, and you're gonna have to keep pushing through this. I'm not gonna get anywhere. Ugh. I need more. It's not even red flags anymore. It's like a red tablecloth, a red blanket, a red quilt, a red sail. Can we sail away from this across the narrow sea? Game of Thrones reference. Did they ever film in Scotland? I don't know. Okay. Ultimately, she says that she cannot keep making excuses for him when she's not doing that for anyone else. I can't keep making excuses for him when I'm not doing that with anybody else. Good, good realization, Hannah. Ugh. They go to dinner. I'm so confused at this point. I'm so exhausted. I'm over it. I'm just like, Hannah, walk away. Walk away, Hannah. And she doesn't give him a rose, but doesn't say he's not going to stick around. I think we're left on a to be continued. I honestly don't even know. <sighs> but I can't quit. Whether I'm Irish or whether I'm Scottish, whether I'm on the cliffs, or whether I'm sailing on a boat. <laughs> Got to get up because they can take our lives. But they'll never take our freedom! But they can never take our wine! I'd play the Wineland games. Is that a competition? Okay. Mm -hmm. Next week on The Bachelorette. We end with a powerful trailer. There are tears. There are apologies. There are Chris Harrison sit downs. I need to know that you're still in this. And you're capable of being in this. There are prayers. Oh my God, what is happening? We have turned to Jesus. Jesus, help us. Please, please help us. Jesus, help us. <laughs> and that was this episode. What did you guys think? Does Luke P deserve yet another chance? Obviously, we see him in the trailer, so he's not gone. And so I guess Hannah gave him one. But did he deserve it? Who do you think Hannah's heart lies with right now? Hannah said that part of the problem was her heart was with Luke, but her head wasn't. And I just want to tell her, Hannah, you don't have to choose between those two. You should get both, your heart and your head with the same person. And hopefully that's what she finds in the end. Or she just on her own, we don't know. I've interviewed her, she hasn't told anybody if she's engaged or not. What do you guys think? Did Hannah end her season with a proposal? Let me know in the comments below. I love you guys so much. Thank you for powering through this powerful experience that was also painfully mind-numbing. Mm -hmm. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> JC, I see you wearing a, a blue blazer. Aye. That would be all right, I'm Aye. sure. Not a salmon-colored one. No. Speaking of colors, uh, what do you think of the, the red <laughs> falling out of it? How do I stay in it? Scot Scottish. What's your go-to? Do it. I would say Scottish brogue. Oh. Scottish. Scottish. A Scottish brogue. What is your... <laughs> I go Irish. Scottish. <laughs> what, what is your... Take on all the red flags. You know, 
One must. Oh, I'm going. I'm going Irish too. <laughs> A Scottish brogue, a fan Scottish brogue, is not like a red flag. A red flag is more like an Irish accent. That was so good! What's a brogue? A, a red flag is like me when I've drank too much rosé. I'm sorry. You got Irish there. 